Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Welcome to Breeders' Cup Focus. We're going to be taking a look at the top 10 contenders currently ranked by Daily Racing Form in the Breeders' Cup Classic Division. Pre-entries are going to be taken for the Breeders' Cup races next week. So right now, this is a possible top 10 list, and the projected odds uh, were compiled by DRF's Brad Free. Mike, what I find very interesting about the top five is that three of the top five favorites are not based in North America. Yeah, and that would be surprising maybe in most years, Dan. Not this year, it's not surprising. I mean, let's be honest, the handicap division in the in North America so far in 2024 has not been strong. There's no standout in this division. So I don't think it's that surprising that there are talented horses from overseas pointing for this race, and they're getting a lot of respect as well. And as we take a quick look at six through 10 before we wheel back to one through five, you'll also note that in the top five, there are no three or there are no older horses. The highest ranked older horse is Newgate, who's sixth on the list and is far from a superstar. Next to his number seven, we will talk about. He is not a confirmed runner in this race. And then you've got Highland Falls and Tappet Trice and Arthur's Ride, all horses that have done some good things, but have also been a bit inconsistent. Let's start things off, though, with the buzz horse. He's the X Factor. He's the favorite. City of Troy, three to one on Brad's morning line, and City of Troy has been brilliant overseas. Let's watch his recent victory in the Judmont International. He is now six for seven. He has won four Group One races. This horse is a very good turf horse, and he would probably be the heavy favorite in the Breeders' Cup turf. Yes, he's by Justify, a Triple Crown winner in the states, but this is all turf in this pedigree. Yeah, as most of the uh, Coolmore horses are. They're, they're turf horses, Dan. That's what they run on. They occasionally will take shots with their really, really good horses to try to increase their stud value in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It almost works with Giants Causeway. For the most part, it really hasn't worked out. Source, is he talented? Absolutely he is. He's by Justify, so maybe he'll handle dirt. These horses are always tough to take. Um, taking on, I guess I want to say top dirt horses, even though this may not be that strong of a field, but they're hard to take, especially at short prices. And I guess he just has to be a short price in this race. He does have a lot of early speed, or at least a lot of early speed for a European. We're used to those horses being held up and make one run. He at least has sort of an Americanized running style. But how does his speed play against the likes of an Arthur's Ride and a Fierceness? Horses that can stay close to very fast paces and keep on going. Is City of Troy going to be outrun early, get dirt kicked in his face and pack it in? Seems likely. I mean, that's almost always the case with with turf horses. That the one, the biggest problem for most of them when they switch over to dirt is the paces are just way faster. So even if he does handle the dirt, even if he just handles it reasonably well, he could be in big trouble in this race, Dan. If he wants to be forward, um, you know, in the early portion of the race, because these horses will be going fast. He's probably not quick enough to beat them to the lead, no matter what post position he gets. And then, you, as you point out, then you start getting dirt kick in your face and you have no idea how he's going to react to that. Fierceness is second on the list, seven to two on Brad's morning line. Last year's champion, two-year-old Colt, he stubbed his toe in the fountain of, in the Holy Bowl, he stubbed his toe in the Kentucky Derby. He's gotten back on the beam with two big victories at Saratoga, the Jim Dandy, and then the Travers. And the Travers, I thought he was very, very good. He was able to sit off horses. I think there was a little bit of a question mark coming into this race. He got the jump on Torpedo Anna, the superstar three-year-old filly turning into the stretch and it's going to get a little bit hairy nearing the wild wire but fierceness is there yeah he, he's going to dig in here and hold on he right he runs really well in this race dan he also he got a pretty soft trip overall in here i don't really want to knock fierceness um because that it's first for a lot of people that's sort of been in fashion he, he's he's a really good horse um but so far we've only seen him be really good when things you know really really go his way and then when things don't uh, particularly go his way. He just hasn't really been that good. He, he ran a, earned a 111 buyer in the Travers. He got the mile and a quarter distance, even though it seemed like he was getting a little late in there. Not knocking him down. I don't love him in the Breeders' Cup Classic. His speed, though, should play very, very well. And it's nice to know he doesn't absolutely need the lead to succeed. Forever Young might be the best Japanese-based prospect to race on dirt here in a long time. He won the Saudi Derby. He won the UAE Derby. He came very, very close in the Kentucky Derby. They gave him the summer off by design, and they brought him back on October the 2nd in a stakes race for three-year-olds in Japan. Let's watch Forever Young. 
win this mile and a quarter race. He broke from the rail in here, and for Forever Young, he was able to get pretty close to the pace. He pretty much sat in the second flight. He collars this leader. Now, he has to work very hard in the stretch. It's not like he's ridden out. This is a driving victory for Forever Young, but it might be a good prep considering it was his first start since the Derby, and I doubt they wanted to go to the bottom of the well with him here. Yeah, he, he does win it fairly easily, too. You're right, though. He was in a hard drive there uh, through the stretch. But it does feel like it was probably a prep race right then. I mean, a mile and a quarter, first star since May 4th. Um, he does what he's supposed to do in there. It's supposed to set him up to ship over here to, to run back in North America at the Breeders' Cup. And you know what? There's nothing. This horse is good, obviously. He ran really well in the Kentucky Derby. The prep is probably just what he needed. The, you know, Japan has sent horses over here before, but the ones they had two horses in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year, and they both, you know, ran okay. To me, this horse is way better than either one of those two. Yeah, I, I don't believe he was cranked up 100% for that last race. It was a really solid prep. The question for him is sometimes the break. He can be a little bit quirky and cranky, and I'm just not sure if he misses the break against this field or at least breaks even a little slow. He can make up the ground. Ushba Tesoro finished fifth in this race last year. He was 7-2 to two in last year's Breeders' Cup Classic. The other Japanese horse, Derma Sotagake, finished second, unlike some of the others. Ushba Tesoro is just a one-run closer, completely dependent on race and pace luck. He's coming into this race off three runner-up efforts. It, it, his running style is a, a huge drawback uh, for him. He, he's obviously a good horse, and I, I just respect that he shows up every single time, Dan. It, it's at least worth pointing out, you know, listen, I wasn't a, a huge fan of his going into the Breeders' Cup last year, but that was a, a racetrack where you did not want to be closing. This horse was way too far away. He made up a lot of ground. He actually ran really, really well last year. But that running style, he hasn't abandoned that running style. That's still how he is, and it works against him every time. The curious case of Sierra Leone continues at Del Mar. This horse has a lot of ability. It's just been a lot of close but no cigar finishes since he won the Bluegrass. Second in the Derby, third in the Belmont, second in the Jim Dandy. We saw him finish third to Fierceness in the Travers. He's a horse that, like Ushba Tesoro, doesn't have a ton of early speed. Sometimes he's green in the stretch. Chad Brown keeps the faith and why not? This is the kind of year to do it. His buyer speed figures keep improving. But is he just going to fall way too far out of it? The running style is problematic, and it's it certainly cost him along the way. He's, I think, still, am I getting a little tired of him? Yeah, I still think he's a really good horse, though, Dan. He, you know, I, I've i never, re I know he doesn't have a ton of speed. I've never really viewed him as a dead one-run closer. So I do think he could fall into the right kind of a trip if, if you know, if his rider, I think it's going to be Flavian Pratt, but if, if his rider sort of keeps his head up and doesn't let this horse get too far away, I think he will make another run. He still has never taken a backward step on figures. I get it if you if everybody just wants to be done with this horse at this point. I don't know if I am. Sierra Leone paired up 99 buyers in the Derby in Belmont, ran a 102 in the Jim Dandy, then a 109 in the Travers. Let's move to 6 through 10. Newgate goes out for Bob Baffert. He won the big cap, going a mile and a quarter at Santa Anita. He beat Subsanador, who ended up finally winning a big race in the California crown. He was terrible, Newgate, in the Dubai World Cup. Baffert did the right thing. He gave him plenty of time. He came back. He ran okay in the California crown. And I guess he is lurking as a sleeper at a price. Yeah, I guess, because you, you don't have to worry about uh, the distance with this horse. I Initially, Dan, when they ran that big cap uh, earlier this year, I wasn't really a fan of that race. This horse won it. Substantador has since come. Uh, he, he's not going to run in the Breeders' Cup now, but he's since made it seem like that was a good race. And also in that field was Highland Falls, who has exited that and done some good things. So maybe that race is a little bit better than I gave it credit for initially. Next is not a confirmed starter in this race. His connections are also looking at the Breeders' Cup turf because that race is at a mile and a half. And next is undoubtedly the best dirt marathoner in this country, if not the world. He's won his last seven starts by probably a combined zillion lengths. He's earned giant buyer speed figures in all those races. And if he runs in this race, he's more than just a curiosity. He's a contender. Yeah, I agree with that. I, you know, it's, it's still interesting to me that they're trying to decide between the turf and the classic. I, and I understand that he's won on turf before, but that would just be ridiculous to run him in that race. He would have no chance in the turf. He would have some chance in the classic. 
I guess the connections are concerned that maybe the faster fractions in the mile and a quarter shorter distance races would be tough for next to keep up uh, with. But boy, the way he's been going, it's hard to doubt anything he could do at this point. Highland Falls is a horse that kind of lost us, I think, earlier this year, Mike. But he came back with a really nice performance in his most recent start at Saratoga. Is this a horse that maybe just needed some time to figure it out and is coming into hand at the right time for a very good trainer in Brad Cox? I think that's the, the right way to look at him because, you know, he really is very lightly raced. And I listen again, I was probably too hard on him uh, for the big cap because it's just a, a race that I didn't like at the time and a performance of his that I didn't like at the time. And then even though he really seemed to improve in his next start at Oakland, to me, that still felt like a really phony figure uh, that that race got with Skippy Longstocking running a really fast race. And I don't think he's that good. And then this horse got the 104. So I just had trouble buying into this horse, Dan. That being said, his Jockey Cup Gold Cup, the last time we saw him this distance at Saratoga, he ran great in that race, and he got a competitive figure for it. He's got really good tactical speed as well. Tapa Trice was third in last year's Belmont, third in last year's Travers. I was looking forward to seeing what we were going to get from him this year. I really was impressed when he beat Highland Falls in the Monmouth Cup, although Highland Falls had a little bit of a trip that day. Mm -hmm. Tapatrice did not run very well in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. It looked like he had a great trip and couldn't parlay that into anything but a fourth place finish. I know he won the Woodward last time out, but wasn't he just back up to his old tricks? He didn't break very well. He seemed green and he was fortunate maybe to catch Skippy Longstocking. Yeah, in some ways it feels like maybe he just caught the right field there, even though he did have things to go wrong for him that he had to overcome and he did it pretty impressively, but it just, it feels like that was just wasn't a great field. And the other issue that I'm starting to have with him, Dan, I st I'm a fan of his still. I'm starting to wonder if a little bit shorter is better for him, like a mile and a quarter and longer. I wonder if he doesn't really want to go those distances. Isn't it foolish just to judge Arthur's ride on one bad race? I know the Jockey Club Gold Cup was terrible. He was odds on that day. He was expected to run very, very well. We were thinking we were going to get a coronation, and instead we didn't get much, but Arthur's ride stopping in the stretch. But his Whitney win two starts back, his allowance win the race before that, they were super efforts with fast fire speed figures. And I think you can make the argument, he's the speed of this race. Yeah, I think you could make that argument. And to me, yeah, and I, you're, the, the question you brought up, brought up at the Open is, is a valid one. Um, but I think it could go both ways. Is it, you know, sort of foolish to just judge him off of one bad race or is it foolish the other way, Dan, to just judge him off of one really good race in top competition? Because I, I understand he ran a 111 in the allowance race, but come on, right? That was a race that he, you know, almost had to fall down to lose. I don't know, man. I, to me, he's the toughest call in the race. I do think he's talented enough to go with these horses. And if he's, you know, that big a price, 20 to one on the morning line, he'd be hard to just dismiss. There are top 10 or daily racing forms top 10 right now for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Remember, pre-entries will be drawn next week and we'll have all the coverage from Del Mar, including race of the day previews daily for the uh, daily racing form race of the day for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Right now, City of Troy, the European, is the preliminary morning line favorite. Hey, let me give you a hot tip. If you liked the contents that you've seen before, click on the like and subscribe button right here. And of course, for more DRF videos like Race of the Days, Stakes Previews, click on the videos right here.